we are recording. Yeah, because I've I've gone through your uh, your course. I think I've, I've I've created a good structure for me on like what you're teaching and how they relate. But I want to just make sure I actually understand your intention as as clearly as I can. So I, I have a few questions for you just to make sure that I really get you. And I would just ask them and you can give me your off the cuff answer because I think the more, uh, the more uh, intuitive, the better. So for me, the first question would be, we're talking about the authentic business course is in your mind, what are the most important concepts you wish people come away from with from this? So, yeah, so that course has several major concepts. Um, one, I want people to understand what authentic business means. <laughs> you know, that's I mean, mm -hmm. just a definition of that, um, which I, you know, start the course with. And then I want people to, there are some things that uh, in the course that I think they could get elsewhere. Like, oh, how do you plan the, the, a year in your business? And how do you um, price your services and, you know, and the business model stuff? That's in there, but that's not as unique. Um, I think what's unique is that I give people the map of what I call the seven disciplines, right, of authentic business, which I feel like, okay, if you understand why these seven disciplines are important, then you can essentially build a business. You can learn those seven disciplines yourself if you want to course I have courses on all these things but it's like those are the seven that's the map like if you do these seven consistently and and in a I call it, I mean Kaizen fashion which is Kaizen mm -hmm. means continuous small improvement like that's all we need we just need to just try try to implement each one of these seven a little bit more a little bit more as the years go on your business will just keep getting better so that's the engine mm -hmm. I guess I want people to really like understand and, and, you know, ask me questions about and, you know, challenge me, of course. And, and you know, some, some people might want to focus on certain aspects of the seven disciplines and some people might focus on others. It's not, uh, it's, not, it's not that which dial you turn is not one size fits all, but there are seven dials. <laughs> you know? And that's the key. Yeah. So basically, it comes down to these seven disciplines yes. as the, the main core of this course. Yes. Okay. Um, second question I have, and I imagine that goes into this is if they take one thing away and they implement it, what would be the biggest or what would make you the happiest if they take this and implement it? What would make me the happiest is if they, if they take the seven disciplines to heart and say, I am going to, um, well, you know, the, the reason there's a reason why they're called disciplines. Uh, they're not the seven not ideas. <laughs> they're, they're not the seven, even not even the seven areas. They're called the seven disciplines, which means if a discipline is either, you could talk about it in terms of us academic discipline. Oh, you've got, you're studying engineering or you're studying the arts. You know, those are disciplines, right? That's one way of thinking about it. It's like, it's a course of study. It's a area of study. And, and development. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other idea of discipline really comes from my favorite quote was Lao Tzu, right? Who says, a, a, I can't quote it exactly, but you all can look it up. Lao Tzu says, it's basically, you, you must have discipline to, to move towards, towards the light. Otherwise you will constantly tumble backwards into darkness. It's something like that. And yeah, I mean, I've seen that in my own life, you know, with many areas of my own life. So what I would be happiest if they said, I, I believe that the seven disciplines are important. I understand why now, and I'm going to take them as disciplines. I'm going to, for example, track how, how my progress is in, in each of these seven areas. Of course, I'll start one by one. I don't have to do all seven at the same time, but mm -hmm. that's my hope and my, what would make me happiest. Yeah. yeah. And with this, what's the biggest place of overwhelm you see people getting stuck in again and again? Uh, yeah, I think it's, if we take it, uh, well, 
the seven <laughs> it's together is what overwhelms people. It's like, Oh my gosh, I'm not even doing any of the seven. Well, no wonder their business isn't taking off if they're not doing any of the seven or they might think, Oh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing two of the seven. I thought I was, you know, already making good progress. Well, two of the seven is, is better than zero of seven, but if they're not doing four or five of the seven, it's hard to make progress in getting clients and in keeping clients and in growing our own offerings or whatever it may be. So I think the overwhelm is in thinking they have to do all seven at the same time. But the, the <laughs> true reality is what well, just like if you went into a university and you're saying, I'm going to make, I'm going to have seven major, <laughs> I'm going to seven majors, which means I'm going to take 15 classes at the same. No, of course not. Or if you were taking the other definite discipline, it's like, okay, I'm going to learn how to run. I'm going to learn how to swim. I'm going to learn violin and I'm going to learn, <laughs> you know, how to speak uh, Greek. We don't do all seven at the same time. Well, I mean, you could if you say, well, I'm just going to do you know, 10 minutes a day on each one if you have 70 minutes a day. So, so that's, I think the thing that I want people to understand is just like you would do any of the seven disciplines anywhere else in your life, how will you do it? It's up to you. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So then I think I, I got most of this from the course and I actually like the way um, you frame it here because this makes it really, really simple. Like it's this, it's about the seven disciplines. It's about understanding them. It's about, and it's about understanding how they connect with the further growth yes. of their yes, business. business. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So maybe I share a little bit of what I think I came up with when I, when I went through your course, because it yes. seemed to me like, like you were talking basically about a few different things. So the authentic business course. Yeah. And awesome. I think you were talking about, so when I was following you, you basically had three areas you were talking about. Mm -hmm but you crammed them into two sessions, right. which I think made it slightly more difficult to separate these different areas. Uh -huh. Like you, you kind of started talking about activities in session one, but then you also went into a little bit of tracking and like all those things seem to be very connected. But I actually, my sense was you talked about three almost separate areas. Like you would talked about what's an authentic business and an authentic business model. Right. And why is it important to be clear on your business model? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then looking at it as a business model, how can we plan based on that? Yeah. That was kind of stage one I saw you do. And that, so for me, this would be like area one. Mm -hmm. Then you talked about the seven disciplines. I called them the activities. Sure, sure. Which I would then kind of map on the business model because each of the disciplines relates to a certain area of the, of the, of the business. Yeah. Like you don't grow an audience without, for instance, uh, creating content without right. doing collaborations. Yes. You don't get people from an audience to customers if you don't do uh, consistent offers. Yes. Like all of those things yes. come down to, you have to do the stuff you have to do. Yes to build this. Yes. And then step three is, so, okay, so I do all sorts of stuff. I do and do and do and do and do and do. How do I know that I'm making progress? Yes. So I have to track and I have to do these like magnifying glasses to look at things. Right. So it seems to me like those were kind of the three steps you took people through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the one you care about most is this one. Mm -hmm. and yeah. just from how you talked about it in the course you actually talked more about these two than you talked about this one mm. interesting okay yep just like time wise and actually emphasis wise yes yes yeah you know i think the reason is because i my mind is so uh thinking in terms of day-to-day 
pragmatic actions that mm-hmm. I like to think of it in terms of, well, the seven disciplines are not fine and good, but how does that map to our daily activities? Like, like how do I know I'm doing the seven disciplines? Well, I know I'm doing them because look, I put the, I, I'm tracking it. Look, today I, I did some content. Oh, uh, you know, three days ago, I, I reached out to a potential collaborator. Like, I know it happened because I tracked it. So that's why I, I think in terms mm-hmm. of tracking, yeah. And, and I actually think that's a step for anybody who's not already quite deeply in the, in the disciplines. Yes. The tracking is, or is a step that's like, whoa, yes. I have yes. to track things I'm not even doing yet. Yes. Like, right. That doesn't make very much sense. Yes. Or that's, or, or that's like, like, yeah, that's part of the overwhelm. Like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to get into this because I have to track all this. It's like, do I, mm-hmm. do I have to? And it's like, I think what happens is, in my opinion, like, sure, people can, of course, they, people build businesses without doing any tracking. It's just like people who become fit without having an exercise plan. Of course, that happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, if you're lucky, uh, it, or if you just have like really good intuition about what fitness is, then you just stay fit and, you know, that's fine. That's great. Yeah. Or, or, or people who, um, you know, so they, they, they learn violin without following a method or they just kind of practice. Those, yeah. those people exist and it's, and it's almost crazy, but, but yeah. so, so th- th- those are the three things. And my, my suggestion would even be if you want to teach it again with these contents, yes. Like maybe break them up into three different sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Cause then you have clarity on this session is about understanding business. What is an authentic business? Yeah. How is it different from a non-authentic business? Yes. Yes. How do business models look? Right. right. Why is for instance, the audience so important, yeah. but also why is it important to know your offers mm-hmm. and how much money to charge for that? Yeah. yeah. Like you can really walk them through that because I think, especially more intuitive people are often very averse to any sort of thinking in, on these lines. Yes. Right. So, yes. And then going into the seven disciplines and making clear why are these disciplines needed? Yes. To do that. Yes, 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 yes. And then you could have a call where you go through and why is it not, not unimportant to actually track? Uh, yeah. Because that will help you to actually do the disciplines. Right. Right. So I think that would be a very simple way that I think it would be clearer in people's mind. Yes. Because these things are really clear to you. And I imagine on one level, you might be worried about not giving people enough content. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. I would actually imagine that keeping it really simple is better for most of them because this stuff is second nature to, to you. Yes. It definitely is not to them. And, and especially because I'm, I'm branding this as an introductory course. I think, uh, I yeah. think you're right that I've kind of crammed introductory and intermediate, maybe even a little bit of advanced uh, into an intro two session course. Yeah, so this is good. And it's just good because I reteach this course once a year. So I will be redoing it in December and I will mm. definitely take this into account. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. So this was the first structure I noticed in your, in your call. The second one was you seem to have a few things you were coming back to repeatedly. Mm. And I imagine if you use this as kind of a repeated thing to come back to throughout the sessions, rather than just on one or two occasions, this could be another uh, kind of pedagogic teaching point for people, Mm -hmm. which was you came back to the, the two main mistakes I see people do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't remember what two I said. <laughs> I would actually say, I would actually also imagine you, you were actually saying at least three, but uh, you, you called it the two main mistakes. Main mistake number one is people build something and then they market it really hard to people that are not in their audience. So yes. they try to forget to build an, they forget to build an audience. Yes. And mistake number two was, People build something they think people will like yes. rather than figuring out what people actually need. Yes, 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 yes. I think mistake number three you referred to, but you never mentioned as a mistake is people do all sorts of stuff, but they don't do the seven disciplines. 
Right. Yeah. So yeah. they do all sorts yeah. of activity that doesn't actually benefit the growth of the business very much. Mm -hmm. And if you were to use this as kind of a fallback thing where, where in the beginning of the course you introduce it as, and I'll be talking about the three main mistakes mm -hmm. and you don't even give them to them in the beginning, but then after you've talked about like the disciplines, you can say, and this is mistake number one is People do all sorts of stuff, but they don't do this. Yeah. And then yeah. when you talk about audience mm -hmm. research, you can say, and this is mistake number three. Yes, yes, yes. So people have an audience, but they never ask their audience what they actually want. Right. So they build stuff they think their audience wants rather than asking them. Right. right. So, so you can have that kind of as a fallback, which I think will bring these things in much deeper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the second one was, you you refer to that only once, but I think this is a very powerful teaching tool. If we were working together, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah. If we were working together, I would check your business model. Right. I would check if you are doing the disciplines. Right. And I would see what are you tracking. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now that again, that's, three point. That's a that's a good point. Yeah, I I I think I probably only mentioned that once because. I, one, I don't want people to feel badly if we weren't working together. Um, secondly, I actually, you know, that's not part of my business model right now, but you're right that I could say if you were working with me or somebody else, you know, or a friend on this stuff, this is what you would be track checking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think even just framing it as if, you, if we were working together, this is what I would pay attention to. Yes, yes. That, that just makes it so clear. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. And actually, this makes it also clear why you have the three sessions, mm -hmm. because you would say, well, basically, if we were working together, I would check your business model. Right. I would see what are you actually doing, mm -hmm. and then I would see what are you checking. Yes. So yeah. it's, again, it's mapping those two on top of each other yeah. just through a completely different lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I like it. So this was the notes I just took. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so yeah, and this this is the kind of stuff I'm I was coming up with while I was listening to you. So it's this, um, for instance, just in on the way of uh, of how to explain things to people. So kind of explaining. So what is a business model for an authentic business? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, each business has a business model. Right. Some people don't even know their own business model, but they definitely have a business model. Yeah. And it, at its core is, I offer this to these people yeah. in this way. Yeah. 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 An authentic business model does this on, I offer something that I have experienced right. to people who want it yes. in a way that's coming from the heart. Yes. Yes. So very clear. Uh, yes. And some business models reliably work. There are the ones that, that work on one on one, yeah. or you call this active. Yeah. There are the ones that are passive. Yep. Shoop, shoop. And there are the ones that are mixed. Yeah. Um, and they work a little bit like Lego. Mm -hmm. So you have okay. different pieces you can choose from. Mm hmm. You have, for instance, online courses. Mm -hmm. You have one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You have books. Yeah. And a business model is kind of like Lego, yeah. putting these together right. in right. a way that makes sense. Yeah. And only when you know the kind of Lego structure you have or you want to have, can you then also start to think about, okay, so how much money should I charge? So, yeah. uh, how many people can I, can I work with, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That's why we start this by looking at what's the business model for you. Mm -hmm. So, so this is kind of giving them an overview of what are they learning and why is that important? Mm -hmm. And, and my sense is you often jump very quickly into the how. Yeah. And especially in introductory courses, I think it's really important to give people the why and the how, uh, why and the what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Right, right. Because if, if, they, if they understand and kind of integrate into themselves, okay, this is the map that I need to use to get, make progress, then they have the motivation to get the tools, do the exercises, whatever is needed to actually take the journey. Yeah. 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 And, and just to continue a little bit down this, how I'm planning it or looking at it in my mind, I would even go as at this as if I would then want to explain the seven disciplines, I would basically look at that as, um, choop, choop. um, okay, let's, let's draw it out. So we want to get here. This is the business model we're looking at as an example. So for, ex for instance, there are online courses and there is one-on-one -on -one and there is an audience. This is what we're going for first. Mm -hmm. This is kind of our goal. Now the question is, what do I have to do to get there? Question mark. Mm -hmm. And then that's where you would introduce the seven disciplines. And you would basically map them on top of, or you could map them on top of this saying, so this is where we want to go. Actually, to build an audience, these are the disciplines that are really important to build an audience. Right. You have to have consistent content. You yeah, can do yeah. audience research. Yeah. Um, and then, let's, so, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. And, but, but that way you, you map uh, the, the activities onto their goal. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, right. So rather than just giving them activities, yeah. you make clear this is where you want to go. We looked at that last session, mm -hmm. and this is how the activities relate to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And this is also why if you're more focused on, you already have an audience and you want to build your practice, you should probably focus on these activities. Right. If you don't even have an audience yet, you should probably focus on these activities. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Okay. So it, it's kind of trying to just make things. Yes. Click together in yes. a way. Yes. Yes. I mean, and I think the, I think how you're doing it here with starting with a blank page and then <laughs> building it right in front of them um, piece by piece also helps them to see the connections, you know, and then just, it helps the brain to like, Oh, step by step, baby steps. Okay. There was a blank page and now there's a you know, square here and okay. I see what the square means. Okay. Now I see what, you know, why these circles are here because these, yeah, it gets, helps them fits in in mind. So, I mean, and I just want to say for those who are watching this, uh, Lucas, you do, I, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but I do want to ask, um, obviously you've done a, quite a service here. Uh, for me, do you do this for other people? Can you do this well, for other people? <laughs> I, I think I can. I am not yet doing this for other people. As of this recording, <laughs> but if someone's yeah. watching this a few months down the road, you, you might actually be offering this already. Yeah. So, so you are putting me on the spot with that. <laughs> um, uh, I, I have been doing this in a few sessions. It's, it's something that's pretty new for me, but it's something I thoroughly enjoy doing. So yeah. I don't see why I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I, I mean, cause I think you, uh, for the people who are watching this, I think it's, it's, it, I would guess it's apparent that you have a gift of doing this and it's something that uh, probably nobody has done with them or, or maybe somebody is lucky and has someone, someone done, but I've never had anyone do this with me and I've, been around in business for 11 years. So yeah. <laughs> so I, and I've taught dozens of online courses and has no one has, I mean, to be honest, actually, uh, Lucas early on, um, when I was selling the $2,000 online courses, um, I did feel like I had, I was compelled to do slides. <laughs> you know? Nowadays I have a single document for my hundred dollar courses, $60 courses, whatever the single document. And I kind of talked through it, but I used to do slides and the slides were, were hard to do. They were the hardest part because I have to like, you know, use my mouse and draw certain things. And it was, you know, it didn't come naturally to me. So if I had you 
even back then, it would have been so much faster and it would have been so much more probably logical and things would fit together better. But I think that that is, uh, anyway, that's, a, that's quite a gift that you can, you can offer to people, um, a service. Uh, so anyway. Thank you very much for, for those kind words. Yeah, and I hope, and I hope just uh, those who are watching this, I hope just if you had gone through my authentic, you know, intro to authentic business course, hopefully seeing these diagrams will like make a click for you much better. And if, if you haven't taken it now, you might be interested in actually going forward and understanding this better. Yeah. And, and, and I am also, also really curious if we can find a way to, to really bring these drawings into the course. Oh. Because I think, yeah. I think it's not going to be that difficult and I think it can improve the quality of teaching yes. I so much so just because it's, yeah. it's, it's a visual model and, our, yes. and like 70% of our mind, brain functioning is visual processing. Yeah, yeah. We're doing no, that yeah. constantly. I, I definitely am feeling motivated to, to, to bring that in. So we can uh, talk offline on what, what that means yeah. or how, how that works, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Anything else before we uh, before we go, or before we stop the recording? Um, no, I, I'm, I was just. I think this was also already a good good look at just what I've been thinking about when I was going through this, and how because I I really appreciate your models, and I think there's something so grounded and. And at the same time, sophisticated in them, like they are—they are really simple, but they're—but they're not um, not stupid simple. They're just simple. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm hoping the case. But but you're right that the drawings would make it elegantly simple. That's that's where we need to go. Yeah. Elegantly simple. That's let's make it elegant. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is the journey of learning, isn't it? Like you start from. I don't know what I don't know. And so I'm simple minded in that way. And then you learn, oh my gosh, this is the things that I don't know that I need to know. And then it gets complicated in the middle. And then if you get good at that skill, you, you learn how to make it elegantly simple. It's like, oh, now it, it, it's all simple to me. It's all obvious mm. to me, right? It's, but, then, but then, you know, I'm on this, you know, the, 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 the teacher is on this side of elegantly simple in their own mind. And they try to teach it to everybody on this side and it becomes really complicated, right? So it's like, how do you teach it so that it's it, that journey, that, 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 that journey is, has a gradual incline rather than overwhelm, you know, overwhelm, overwhelm, and they never mm -hmm. become elegantly simple. And that's, I think that's the. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's part of where with these drawings, I'm trying to create these. And this, this is, this seems to be something that my mind really, likes yeah. but also that i think is so important yeah. for for just understanding is this sense of if i can create a very simple model mm -hmm. that let, let's look at this that just that i can refer back to yeah and where it starts with this is your business model and then it goes to and these are the activities that add, add up to it and this is the tracking then I'm not starting with zero with each, but I'm actually just expanding the really simple model of, oh, so we can think about our business like this. Okay. Right. And in the end, it's still the same model, just that there are magnifying glasses on the side. <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. So one, one more question I want to ask you for those who are watching this and going, I want to do what Lucas is doing for my own business. Like I, 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 I want to be able to draw and, and um, I've, I've, I've been pushing you into this. Uh, but I'm not going to say, you know, you don't have to say, I've been pushing you to teach a co an online course showing us how you do all this stuff, right? So maybe that's coming in the future. And whoever is watching this, you can, you can uh, I'm sure we'll have links above or below the video and you can contact Lucas that way. But um, do you want to say anything about how people can reach out to you on learning how to do this stuff? Obviously, people might even have basic questions as well. What's the software? What's the hardware? All that stuff. I mean, I, I might be teaching something like this at some point in time. Right yes. now, I still feel like I'm learning this. I so, know because you um, you are you are such a uh, you know you 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 are you are quite a perfectionist in the in the way of like before you teach uh, you know 
but it, it, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm a perfectionist. I'm actually quite sloppy in many areas, uh -huh. but I, I have a sense of integrity. And I think there are people out there who have so much more skill in this area than me, so that I feel a bit strange in teaching. Yeah, but that's, that's another thing, story. Of course, is but, that, yeah, those who are watching don't know who, who those other people are. So <laughs> yeah, that, that might be true. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, but but if people want to reach out to me, they can reach out to me on Facebook. I'm there, Lucas Forstmeyer. Yes, yes. Nobody well, will know we'll how to spell that, that, but yeah. but it, yeah. it will be probably yeah. somewhere in the description. Uh, I will put I will put in the notes of the video what is the pro appropriate way to contact you because I also don't want yeah. people I don't want too many people contacting one on one and feeling like you have to like respond to everybody with the same question or the same answer. So in the mm -hmm. notes, be sure to look at the notes of the video if this is being watched in some time in the future, and there will be a way to kind of get Lucas's help on these things in a in a way that's doable for him. We'll, we'll say that way. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, let me you're, you're doing recording. you're doing more for my promotion here than I am. That's, I that's wonderful. Be because, <laughs> because I feel like this is needed. You know, I feel like this is going to be uh, a service to people. Really. So I'll stop the recording mm -hmm. here. Everyone look at the notes of the video to see what the next steps are. And then Lucas, you and I can talk off. So thanks so much. Wonderful. Thanks.